Hi, I'm Mike Cerrone with Mastermind Agent and welcome to the Referral Mastermind Call. Uh, today, we're going to go into uh, our typical, this is an open session, by the way, and we're going to go down to three things that we like to talk about. Uh, the first one, I'm going to do a little bit of training to give you a couple of ideas on some things I think you should do to get more repeat and referral from your friends, family, and past clients. Uh, then we're going to go into phase two, where we talk about uh, uh, open it up for any Q&A that you have on how to get more referrals. And then the third part of this, we're going to uh, open it up to talk about anything you would like to talk about in your real estate career uh, to see if we can uh, make it better and kind of do an open Q&A session. So prepare any questions you have for uh, about 15 minutes and we'll be probably getting into that as people start joining us. All right. The first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about uh, repeat referrals. We're sitting here in January. You should have already mapped out your year on what you're going to do to get more repeat referrals and set up your annual marketing plan. If you've done that, that's fantastic. If not, go ahead and jump on it right now. Do not delay. Uh, you're already starting to get behind the curve there. So go ahead and put together your annual marketing plan. Uh, and I'm going to share with you a couple of ideas uh, today that can help with that. Uh, we're going to talk about an idea you can do in January. We're going to talk about an idea that you can do in February to get you started. So let's go ahead and get into the January idea. And I'm going to actually share my screen. So give me just a second here. Um, there you go. Hopefully you can see my screen and give me just a second. I'm going to try to make this work a little better. And hide. There, I think I can see better now. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if that's coming up on the screen or not, but uh, let's go ahead and keep going. So this is what I think you should do. You can do this. This is a uh, what I call a tax letter. And this is a cover letter that you would put on a closing statement for clients you've had in the prior year. So we're sitting here. Uh, January of 23, 2023. Uh, this is an example of an older letter, but it's a great format that you can use to get an idea and stimulate your brain and have an idea of, of what I think you should be putting together. And this is showing you uh, an example, again, of this cover letter. And it's a very simple project. You make this cover letter, you put it in your WordPress processor, so it pumps in the the name of the individuals, you know, so you can personalize it and you can spit them out pretty quick on a printer. And then you take these letters and you put them on a copy of the closing statement for the homeowner. They're going to need this for their upcoming taxes uh, in April here in the in the U.S., uh, April 15th for the personal return. And uh, first time home buyers in particular don't know that they need this, but all all buyers and sellers are probably going to need that statement for different parts of their tax return and different variety of reasons so that they can get some write offs uh, or settle up with the IRS if that if that's the case. Uh, your investors will need it uh, as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and I'm going to see if I can make it a little bigger. Uh, oop, that made it really big. All right, hopefully you can still read that. Uh, I just want to make it a little bigger on the screen. And this comes to us, by the way, from our friend Tony, Tony Holquin, who uh, was kind enough to share it with us. Uh, and so let's jump in. He gives the date, uh, you know, basically the month that he's sending this out says, hey, now that the holidays are over and we start to settle into the new year, it's time to start thinking about preparing our income taxes one of the benefits of home ownership is being able to deduct property taxes and mortgage interest on our personal income taxes. Enclosed, you'll find a statement, excuse me, the closing statement or statements of your home purchase or sell uh, from this past year. Notice how he's talking about purchase and sell, so it's a nice generic letter. Uh, this would be one of the first documents your accountant or tax preparer will ask for, or even if they're doing it themselves, they'll need this when preparing your return. I'm sure in all the confusion of packing and unpacking, this paperwork is not easily accessible. This is such a great letter Tony put together. Uh, by providing you this service, I hope that I'm relieving one of the small details uh, that seem to be so plentiful during this tax time. Uh, please have your accountant call me if he or she has any questions. 
and that's kind of nice, right? Opening up, offering more service. Uh, if I can offer any further assistance, paperwork, or real estate advice, please don't hesitate to call. It's my goal to have you and your family as clients for life. Sincerely, Tony and Kelly Holquin. And uh, then we got a PS down here. If uh, 2022 is the year, now he sent this out. This example letter is from 2022, excuse me, 2020, but you can do it for 2023 or 2023, 2025, or whenever you see this. Uh, but here we go. P.S. If this year is uh, the year that a friend or family member is going to buy or sell a home, please have them call me. I'm never too busy for your referrals. And I promise to live up to your recommendation. What a fantastic job Tony has done on that letter. And uh, people ask me all the time for an example of a letter that they can use for this cover letter. Again, to go over the, uh, the settlement statement to send out. And there it is. So I, I hope that's been helpful. It's uh, kind of a nice, nice little piece there uh, to see what's going on uh, from somebody else's perspective. And I'm going to share this. Get over here. This is another example. Oops. <laughs> trying to multitask. I'm not doing a very good job of helping people get in. But um, anyway, this is a, a, a something that Tony wanted to share. Somebody was grateful that they got this and I'll read this to you real quick you know, It's on social media it says, Hey, Tony, I wanted to sincerely thank you. I just got your mail with my tax documents enclosed. I can't even begin to explain how much of a weight you lifted off my shoulders. Being a first time homeowner, I had no idea what documents to bring or any of that. You are the best. Thank you so much. And he said, Hey buddy, it's my pleasure. So uh, you're going to get great feedback as well. All right, so let's go ahead and stop the sharing. Hopefully, that, that is an idea that helps you. Uh, in fact, I've got a couple of folks that have joined us. And if you have any questions on that form, let's go ahead and hear from you uh, before I go on to the next thing that we're going to talk about today. So do you have any questions about this tax statement? I call it the tax letter. The, the tax, it's basically a cover letter for their settlement statement that they need for their taxes. Do you have any questions about putting this together and getting it in out? Or do you have an example of that you've done it and it's worked well? If you have, go ahead, unmute yourself. Let us know what you're thinking. I'll also remind you that if your microphone's not working for some reason, you can always type in the chat. And I, I don't do a great job, but I will try to see what's going on there on chat as well. Okay. Well, hopefully you're all doing that. I'm not hearing or seeing anything. So I'm going to go on to the next item that I'd like to share with you to get more repeat and referrals. And again, I apologize if I took a while to get you in trying to multitask and I'm not doing a great job. I need to work on that. But let's go back and share my screen. All right, so hopefully you're seeing this. Um, you're sharing a screen. I don't know, my, my thing is making a bunch of notes. I hope it's not covering up my screen too much, my little technology. One of the other things I think you should be doing this time of year is this. I want to see if I can move this out of the way. I think it might be covering. Hide, hide, show video panel, hide. Where's the, I'm sorry, floating meeting controls. Hopefully that helps if it was covered up. All right, so check this out. This is uh, a postcard. I, I did a lot of my work in the old days in postcards. So I love postcards and they still work great today. Uh, but right now, Again, we're sitting here at the end of January, and you've got a holiday coming up in three weeks. So it's always a good idea when you're planning out your annual marketing plan. If you can't think of anything else, just think of the holidays that are coming up, and if you can do some kind of tie-in to the holiday. Uh, and the, one of the best things you can do for reach-outs are events. Uh, uh, if you don't want to do a bigger event, you can do a smaller event. You can also do contests. That's what this is. And giveaways, where you're just purely giving something away. A contest, and the difference between a contest and a giveaway, you're going to give a, a prize in a contest and a giveaway, you're just going to give something away. The contest requires some action to enter 
uh, a random drawing to win something. That's what I like to use random drawings. Um, and then the giveaway is also a random drawing. It's just the contest, they have to do something and it makes it a little more fun and enjoyable. And believe it or not, you might get more involvement, more people participating when you do a contest rather than a pure giveaway, because uh, they get kind of excited and have fun with it. So in this example, the kissing contest we do for Valentine's Day coming up on the 14th of February. And so you can send out this postcard about now or in the next week or so. And it basically says, hey, you know, I got this contest coming up and here's what it's all about. So you got, to, we'll go through this. You got this kissing contest. Who do you love? Share a kiss, take a photo, enter a contest. Right, right there in the headline and the sub headline, they now know exactly what it is and what to do if they want to participate. Now, if they want a little more details, we go over to the right. Uh, it says, hey, how do you enter? It's the Valentine's Day kissing photo contest. Win a $100 gift card. You can make it any amount you want. Uh, but that kind of gets some people's interest. These are very low budget items, but they're great for reach out. They're great for reach out. That's why the top agents love to do events, contests, and giveaways. Anyway, it's uh, this is a win a hundred dollar gift card for a romantic dinner for two at Romeo's restaurant. Uh, take a photo of a kiss, post it on my page to enter a prize. Uh, and then, excuse me, to enter and then draw the drawing for the door prize number one, two, and three kind of botching it, but it's much, well, better spelled out there already. Uh, to learn more and enter, go to my Facebook page and you can call it whatever you want. I recommend when you set up that Facebook page that you name it so it's easy for people to find rather than the numbers, you can convert it to uh, a name and uh, it's much easier for you to use then in your marketing. And then you give a deadline of when it's due and when they have to participate. In this case, you're going to go right up to the uh, Valentine's Day because you're going to give the gift for a later date for them to use. Uh, if you were going to try to hit it so that they had to go out on Valentine's Day, you'd need to have this uh, entry into the contest, obviously, before that. You just work that out. Uh, I got this photo off of uh, Pixels. When you use photos, you can either take your own, which is always great. If you... Um, just I caution you, if you use other people's photos, remember to get royalty-free photos. If they're not royalty-free, you may be uh, creating a copyright infringement and have an issue because you're supposed to pay for usage of the photos. But if you go to a royalty-free site, you can use those photos uh, without cost as long as you indicate you know, where you got the photo. And so this is uh, comes from a site called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S. Pexels.com. It's a European-based company, so you'll see a lot of European kind of focused pictures, uh, but it's pretty cool, and you're able to find a lot of cool free stuff that you can use in your marketing. All right, so this is what the front of the card looks like. Let me see if I can share a little more with you today. Uh, this is what the back of the card looks like, uh, and again, this is just to give you a model uh, of what you might want to use. Uh, your user romantic dinner. Here we go. With a romantic dinner for two, the $100 gift card. Uh, I got a photo of these people eating, kind of romantic, uh, visual. Again, pulled this off pixels. A uh, Tanner Adora prize drawing for romantic dinner for two at Romeo's restaurant during the Valentine's Day kissing photo contest. Post a photo at Facebook groups and then the name of your group. Uh, thinking about moving, call me. So a little teeny call to action there as well. And then you got your name and your uh, cell and your email address and your website and your uh, license number and any other disclosure you need. And at the bottom, it says, hey, if you're already working with a real estate agent, if I get this this time, okay. If you're already working with a real estate agent, professional, uh, please disregard this solicitation. So you got your little disclosure there. Make sure you put any other disclosures you're required to do. And uh, then there you go. That's, that's it. It's a very simple thing. And you're like, hey, Mike, I, I like the postcard idea, but uh, I don't want to do a postcard. I want to do uh, social media. Well, these things, they translate. That's the beauty. I think in the format of postcard, because I like pictures and words and whatever, but they're easily transferable into some other format. So, for instance, there's an example of how you could turn this into a post, right, into social media. You can change the size of the photo. Uh, and basically the text, but you get the same idea. Now you can put this out and announce it. Hey, it's the Valentine's Day Kissing Photo Contest. 
High love is in the air. Kiss is worth a thousand words. Who will you kiss on this Valentine's Day? Your spouse, significant other, kids, parents, friends. And then, boom, if they pop that open, it basically talks about the event and how they enter and so forth. Okay. And if they enter, by the way, on all of this, they're going to go over to social media. Typically, Facebook could be wherever you want it, though, wherever they can do a group. But the top agents will tend to like Facebook groups because you can pull a lot of people in there and then you can communicate with them uh, directly without any interference or cost. Like uh, if you have a page or to communicate with all the people who've liked your page, you obviously often have to pay Facebook. But when you're in a group, you can just blast things out because they've joined your group and you can talk to your people uh, directly without cost. So that's kind of a neat idea there. Hope you like that. So here were those were some ideas I think you can use uh, in the upcoming uh, weeks uh, to get out in front of your people. This is the time to do it, right? We are ramping up for the beginning of the new year. Uh, people are already thinking now that we're in the uh, mid-late January, they're already thinking about moving this year. They've gotten out of the holidays uh, session. The snow is out there. If you're in the northern area, like I'm in Colorado, so it's kind of wintry and cold, but that's all going to be thawing soon and they're going to get uh, cabin fever and want to move. And in my market, boom, it starts to really heat up in the spring and that's starting now. They're thinking about it. So you want to be reaching out now and getting people's minds and be talking to them and grab that mind share before they've already made the decision to <laughs> and hired someone, right? So go ahead and get out there and start talking to your people. That's the reason to do contests and events. It starts the conversation. I just want to give you some examples of some things you could do other than just calling them up directly on the phone, which works. It's just the top agents have figured out if you do these events and contests and giveaways, it gives you an easy way to start the conversation. Right? You just call up and say, hey, Jane, how you doing? It's Mike. I just want to let you know I'm doing this cool kissing day contest. Oh, what is it? Well, let me tell you what it is. Hey, you want to participate? Fantastic. Awesome. I'll get you in there. I'll send a link over. And at that point, you either have the option to bring up real estate or not. Oftentimes, they will, especially if you drop in this little statement, which is, hey, how's work going? <laughs> okay. Because they're going to tell you and then they're going to say, well, how's your work going? And now uh, you just open the door. Um, all right. So those are a couple ideas I hope that are helpful for you uh, and to ramp up and have a good quick start to this year. Again, if you don't have your annual marketing plan, map it out now. Just gave you a couple ideas on how to start it up, uh, but go ahead and get things going. Uh, and if you can't think of what to do, try to think around holidays or seasons. Those are kind of some fallbacks. Uh, and then let your creativity go wild. Just have some fun making these reach outs. The key is conversations per day. My favorite little idea on that, by the way, is uh, if you listen to our interviews and success calls, listen to Caleb Spears, one of the best ones on this concept. Caleb tripled his business in one year, tripled his business. It was already a strong business. He tripled his business in one year, and I think he got up to 34 million in uh, volume that year. And all he, well, I'm not gonna say all he did, but the biggest thing that he did to make that change was he focused on one number. Every day he just focused, he tracked this one number and boom, tripled his business. What was the number? Conversations per day. How many conversations per day did he have with people? And to him, by the way, it could be uh, a face-to-face -face conversation. It could be over the phone. It could be a text message conversation. It could be email conversation, social media uh, conversation in the comments. It could be a conversation through Messenger or any other app. His definition is when it's two-way two communication. If it goes back and forth, that's a conversation. Now, if it's just one way, you're just blasting out, that's good, That's you know, but that's not a conversation. And he was tracking conversations. Boom. All of a sudden, he he saw that it tripled. You you should check out that interview if you haven't, because we that was on video. And he showed us his screen and his tracking and the relative uh, movement from how many uh, conversations he had to, to the production that he was, was resulting in. So it was a pretty good call. Anyway, I hope that helped out. Uh, again, we do these calls. We have three parts to them. One, I try to teach you something when we start. Uh, two, we go into um, 
an open session where we talk about uh, referrals. Uh, anything that you would like to talk about with referrals, go ahead and unmute yourself and let me know what you want to talk about or type it in the chat. And then uh, number two, number three, we open it up to talk about anything. So we're now moving into phase two, which is we'll talk about anything you want to talk about to get more repeating referrals. So either unmute yourself and chat with me uh, and, and the people in the group or um, uh, type it in. So I, I'm looking down in chat. I say Stephanie has written, I'm having difficulty getting my daily conversations in. I like this topic. Where to find the video of Mr. Spears? Yeah, Caleb Spears. Good question. So if you go over, there's a couple different places we post it, but the fastest way to get there is if you go to mastermindagent.com, mastermindagent.com. That's our website. If you go there uh, and you look in, uh, I think I labeled it success calls in the uh, top. We used to call it interviews, but they're success calls. By the way, you can also see those success calls on your favorite podcast medium. Uh, so iTunes and um, uh, just blasts out there everywhere. Google Play and I'm trying to remember all the other places it goes out to Spotify. I, I don't all the places you can see <laughs> a uh, podcast. Uh, you can check that out. And the name of the podcast is Real Estate Agent Success Calls. Real Estate Agent Success Calls. Uh, but you can also see it again on our website at mastermindagent.com and. Try to remember if we posted, I think we posted it onto our YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel is uh, Mastermind Agent Network, Mastermind Agent Network. And then if you scan through that, you can you can find Caleb's uh, uh, talk as well. A really good one. Uh, again, Caleb Spears. Spears, like you're, you're throwing a spear. Um, eh. Cool. Stephanie just said she found it. That's fantastic, Stephanie. Check that one out. You're going to really like it. Uh, he did an amazing job uh, of helping us out to get some focus on how to get more repeat referrals through conversations per day just by tracking that number. Sounds so simple and silly. Sounds silly, really. But these silly, these simple things <laughs> work the best. Uh, just tracking. Whenever you start tracking something, your mind focuses on it and you just get better at it. So if you're focused on the wrong thing, like <laughs> how many Twinkies did I eat today? Well, you're probably going to get that kind of result where <laughs> you, you may smile for a while, but you're going to get pretty big <laughs> uh, if that's your focus. You know? But if you uh, instead focus on how many miles did I walk today, then you're going to get that kind of result. Right? And same thing happens in business. Whatever you focus on, you're going to get more of and you're going to get better at. So anyway, that's I'm kind of rambling along here, but I'd love to chat with anybody who would like to bring up any issue they would like us to talk about on uh, repeat and referrals. Let's stay on that for a minute. Anything we've talked about so far, anything you're trying to set up that you'd like us to bounce some ideas around on um, any success stories. If you have anything, go ahead and unmute yourself. Let us know what you're thinking. Okay, well, <laughs> let's do this. Let's open up. I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything in chat. Good job, Stephanie. She found it and just got it in there. Good. So check that out after this call. Um, let's do this. Let's open up to anything you would like to talk about on repeat and referral. Uh, excuse me, on any topic, on any topic uh, in your real estate practice. So we'll go into phase three where we just opened this up to talk about anything you'd like to talk about. So uh, I've been in the industry for three decades, know a lot of stuff. <laughs> it may or may not be the right stuff to help you, but I do know a lot of stuff. If you would like to ask a question of somebody who's been around and then I've got people on the call that I can see have been around as well. Uh, so they can chime in and give some answers too. So if you are you having any issues that you would like any help with, now is a great time to unmute yourself and tell us what you're thinking or ask your question. Uh, and if you're scared of doing that for some reason, go ahead and just type it into the chat or if your microphone's not working. 
Uh, but let's hear what you're thinking. And yeah, Mike, just had a couple of questions on uh, referrals, getting uh, recruiting people to EXP. Is that is that good? Hey, hey, Bob, I think I, I can barely hear you. I, go ahead, say what that is again. Yeah, I just wanted some of your advice on um, recruiting some people to EXP. Can you hear me better? Oh, I can. I can hear you. I can. Yeah. Um, okay. It's not usually the topic of this uh, of this call. Um, let's do this, Bob. Give me uh, about a few more minutes to see if anybody else has any topic that they would like to talk about in their real estate practice first. Okay. And if they don't, then I'll open it back up and we'll chat about your topic as well. That way, people who just came for the referral or the business building get their answers quickly. Uh, but then we'll go into uh, uh, agent attraction if, if that's a topic other people may be interested in as well. So let's hold off on that, Bob, just for a second. And we'll see if anybody else has any other topics they'd like us to address first. Okay. So, again, this is your opportunity to um, open up on anything in your real estate practice that would help you move forward. Everybody's rocking it. Everybody's closing 10 transactions a month. <laughs> uh, that, that was my highlight. I got up to 113 closings in a year. Uh, that's, that's really busting it. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. We got a shifting market going on. Anybody want to talk about that? They talk about how they're adjusting to it. Everybody's starting to find a leveling in their market, uh, getting your footing. Hey, I got Mike. Michael Jones, how are you? I can't hear you, Michael. Uh, say something. Yes, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Go ahead. Okay. No, I, I I hit it by I hit it by mistake. I, I brought myself off the mic by mistake. I'm sorry. Hey, no problem. But Welcome to the call. How can I help you? I'm I, no, I'm I'm in I'm enjoying it. I like the idea where uh, you said the gentleman does the um, he sort of monitors the, uh, the, uh, the calls is there was there like a, a a standard amount or 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 some type of baseline that's recommended so you're talking about uh, the conversation per day tracking yes yeah so it's a great question and uh, what I believe he found and what I've found with other people because a lot of people are starting to you know pick up on this idea um, and have that, they've been tracking different things for a long time. It's just the idea of calling it a conversation and having a wide definition. Uh, you don't actually need a lot to have success. It really depends on your goals. So if you have like just three conversations per day where there are true conversations going back and forth, you can get some great results in business out of that. Uh, does that help? I, I'm trying to remember some of the, the conversion numbers we had. For some reason, I was thinking two conversations per day. Oh, I know who it was. It was, um, um, oh, I'm, I'm really tough with names. And I'm trying to, so gotta give me a second. It's uh, Lee, Lee Brown. Lee Brown is in uh, North Carolina. She's another top agent. She probably, she closes somewhere around 100 to 200 transactions a year. She's pretty sharp. She likes this idea of picking up the phone and calling people out of your phone book. Now, on hers, it was if you would make have two phone conversations per day for five days a week and do that uh, over the month. So it's basically 220, about 40 conversations is what that would result in. Her belief is if you do that, you're going to see that's going to result in over time about two closings per month. So two conversations per day, actual communications now for her was on the phone, will result in two closings per month. Does that help try to give some metrics? Yeah, I was I was I was wondering if that person I know uh, the ninja selling system, I know that they recommend uh, I think they recommend about 10 per day or something like that. Um, but 
uh, I was, yeah, I was just wondering if that's what that uh, gentleman was following. You know, remember, of course, always uh, more is better. And Ninja Selling with uh, Kendall, uh, he, he's a phenomenal guy. In fact, I was just talking about Larry Kendall's business the other day. I'm in Colorado, and he's, he ran a business here up in Fort Collins uh, years back. When I, you know, I've been around three decades. So when I was a newbie, I'd heard about him because he had done some amazing things up north. And that was he had this office of about 50 agents and their average production per agent was around 50 closings per year, which is just phenomenal. I mean, that's just, that was phenomenal then. It's phenomenal now. It's just crazy. Uh, and as you know, from that system, they're focusing on repeat and referral. Um, and so anything that uh, he has to say, I would listen to. <laughs> Let's just say that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Try to pull in information from everybody, right? You'll end up creating your own way. Uh, be flexible enough. And that's what I also want to instill in people is I've talked to so many successful people now in the real estate business that they all do it a little different. They all have the same goal, like conversations, but some will do it where they call up in their hard line on the phone. Hey, who do you know is thinking about buying and selling a home? That'll work. It, it might be rough on you and them after a while, but it'll work. Uh, then that's why they came up with the idea of having events and contests and so forth to try to ease that along, ease the conversation, make it a little easier for you to do, really, to say, hey, I got this contest going or an event I'd like to invite you to. Um, and it gets that conversation started and gets you in their mind. You're buying mind share. Uh, but then they also have people like... Um, uh, oh boy, uh, Monica, Monica Angelus, she's a solo agent, closed 162 units in one year. I know it's ex ex insane, right? But she doesn't like to make outbound phone calls. She won't make the outbound phone calls, but she knows she has to talk to people. So what she does is she'll send a text message out and, and she'll just have a comment or a question. And then if somebody replies back, then she'll say, oh, well, you want to hop on the phone to talk about that? That's how she's kind of getting things started, right? Uh, some people do it by email, like I love email. You can do it by text. You can do it by social media post or social media IMs. The point, though, is they want to get into a two-way dialogue, right? If you can get into the two-way dialogue, that now counts as a conversation. And to come all the way back around to your question of two to ten, it's hard to get into 10 conversations per day, okay? It's not hard to make 10 reach outs, right? You can send 10 text messages pretty fast or even dial the phone 10 times really quick, but it's hard to get into 10 conversations. So what they've discovered is you can whittle that back down a little bit and just start a little smaller. It depends on the size of your goals. If you're trying to close 100 units a year, you got to get into 30, 40, 50 conversations a day you're, if you're doing the prospecting method. Um, it, it depends on who your target is uh, and what you have the size of your goal. Um, I know I'm kind of opening this up into weird tangents, but let me explain what I mean by that real fast. If you're going to go out to internet leads, the ratio of uh, leads to closing is 100 to 1. 100 to 1 on internet leads. Um, so you're going to have to talk to a lot of people if you're focused on internet leads. That's the bottom line there. Uh, before you're going to get to a closing or the results you want, most people get burned out before they get to the end or scared and they just never get to the end. Uh, let's look at a couple other real quick ones like open houses are 20 to 1. So if you get 20 leads from an open house, that's going to generally result in one closing on average. So again, you're talking to a lot of people, but not as many as the internet leads. It's five times less, so it's five times easier to do an open house lead. However, you got to then do the open house and the time involved, so you got to do that trade off. Uh, the other groups that we could talk about real quick are internet uh, uh, for sell by owners and expires. Uh, what is their ratio? Well, in the studies, and it's, this has been true for a long time, it's about 10 to 1. These are leads to closing. And by the way, these are all assumed that you're working the leads. Just having the leads sitting in your database doesn't work. You actually have to be working them. If you have 10 FISBOs or expireds, they will result in one closing as long as you're working them. Uh, and so that's better than 
open houses, and that's better than internet leads quite a bit, 10 times better than internet leads because they've raised their head and you know they want to move and they're pretty serious. Um, and then we're going to come down to my favorite and yours, I hope, which is repeat and referral. How many referrals do you need to receive and start working in order to get one closing? Two. <laughs> two. Two. If you get two referrals, you know, okay, a referral or a repeat request, you're going to close one of those. That's incredible. And you know that from your own uh, business, I'm sure. You love when repeat and referral comes in because it's easy, right? They're your friends, your family, people you know. They're going to close. Uh, one out of two. And so that's 50 times easier than going after an internet lead. 50 times less work conversations, reach outs, and, and so forth. So when you're trying to also talk about this, how many conversations per day should I have? It also is important who you're talking to. So if you're talking to these internet leads, you're going to have to have a lot more conversations to get to a closing than if you're talking to repeat and referral. So if you're doing repeat and referral and you got a solid database, you might only need a couple conversations per day to have a really strong business. Uh, Michael, I hope that helped. Absolutely. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, anybody else? Uh, again, we're in our open session, open Q&A. If you've got anything you'd like us to chat about or focus on, uh, either on repeat referral or anything you have in your practice uh, that you're questioning, uh, how to do leverage, how to do uh, anything you want. Lead gen is one of my favorite topics, but anything you want to talk about, um, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and tell us what you're thinking or you're curious about or type it into chat. Uh, I don't see any more things in chat, so I think we're doing all right there. So I, when you say how to do leverage, what do you mean by leverage? Sure. Sure, Michael. So there's a there's multiple ways to leverage your business uh, to get more of it, right? Um, uh, the the levers that you can use for leverage to amp up. And let's talk about the concept of leverage first. What does it mean? It means so if you have no leverage, if you put in one hour of work, you get one hour of result, right? So you know, the the simplest yeah. idea there is. If you were to work at uh, Starbucks <laughs> and they paid you, uh, I don't know what they pay in your area, but $15 an hour, well, you put in one hour of work, you get 15 bucks and that's it. It ain't getting no more than that. There's no leverage. Yeah. Um, and so you're looking for ways to leverage so that you can get a bigger result out the other side. And some of the ways that you can do that uh, are marketing. Okay. So marketing as an example let me give you why I say that. So prospecting would be one-on-one. -on -one. Like you got to make one phone call to, to get in a, to, to try to talk to one person or go knock on one door would be an example. If you're going doors, I used to love doors better than phones. Um, there's That's kind of one-to-one -one in prospecting. You will get results, but it's one-to-one. -one. Now you can leverage your time instead of knocking on one door at a time, you could mail out a thousand pieces of mail. That piece of mail is like you knocking on the door as long as it's being read. And there's a lot of work that goes involved to make it work. But you basically were able to leverage the hour of your time instead of you being able to knock on maybe, I don't know, 25 doors in an hour. If you took that hour and you created a mail piece and you sent it out to name your number, let's say a thousand homes. Well, that's leveraged you 40 to one as far as communication. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So that's a great example where in, in the field that I enjoyed a lot was how can you leverage your, um, your yourself through marketing? You can also, by the way, leverage yourself through people. So uh, a staff or people. So a solo agent can leverage themselves by hiring an assistant, either a part-time or full-time assistant. In fact, the, the quickest way to leverage on the people thing today is a transaction coordinator. They didn't have that when I was getting started. It's really nice that you have it today where you can just hire someone to help you go from under contract to close and help the monitor all the details in there to get you to the closing. And in your market, it depends on where you are, but they'll charge $300, $400, $500 a file to just monitor that thing and get it to close. 
and it's independent contractor, so it's not an employee. You don't have to worry about W-2s, but you got the leverage there of, hey, instead of me spending 10 hours tracking this thing to close, I'll pay someone else $400. They can spend their 10 hours at 40 bucks an hour, and I'll go do the higher dollar productive activity like talking to people who want to buy and sell homes. In other words, get myself another appointment. In fact, just so if you don't know, if you haven't figured it out yet, the highest dollar productive activity that you can do, what is that, by the way? Anybody know what the highest dollar productive activity you can do is in this business? I would say to be in front of be in front of a, a client. You got that right, Michael. That is one of the highest. That is one of the top four or five, depending on who you listen to, is being in front of a client. Uh, let's get more specific. Being in front of a client to show or to list or to get hired. Schedule appointments. Go ahead. Schedule appointments. Yes. Schedule. That is number one. <laughs> let's just say it right now. What, what's your name? I'm trying. My eyes aren't working so good. Uh, Honorata. Or Hana, say again. <clears throat> Honorata. 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 I hope I said that correctly. Uh, Honorata, that was the answer. Way to go. Ding, ding, ding. You get 25 points. Uh, making appointments is the number one most important activity that you can do. Um, if you're good at it, you're, you're going to do phenomenally well. And if you're not, you need to find someone to help. And it's the hardest place to get leverage as far as hiring someone else to help you set appointments and do that qualifying process. Uh, but yeah, if you that's the best place for leverage. Um, and so most top agents, when they're leveraging out with people, that would be the last place they can actually find a good person, a good solid person to stay. The names have changed over the years. When I started, we used to call them telemarketers. And then they start calling them appointment setters. Now they call them ISAs, inside sales agents. There's a lot of different names for this position of somebody who can set appointments, do follow up and set appointments to scheduling. Um, that's going to be the hardest position to find, though, for most in businesses. The, uh, the top agents have turnover. It's, it's a hard spot. But if you can get good at that, you can leverage out everything else. You can leverage out showings. You can leverage out uh, listings. Uh, you can leverage out the maintenance of all that, you know, the fulfillment of the agreement, uh, all the contract closing. Uh, you can buy leads and lead generation if you have a lead conversion system. Um, the key of that lead conversion system, though, is the appointment set. It's the qualify and the appointment set. So uh, what else, let me sure I answered all your questions on leverage. Leverage through marketing, leverage through people, uh, leverage through technology, leverage through technology. I know it's generic, but... For instance, a CRM, you know, you could do where you have one little piece of paper. First of all, you just try to remember everybody's name in your head. Good luck. Then you could put it down on paper. Okay, that's a little better. Uh, but then if you get into an electronic CRM, now you're controlling it. You can schedule campaigns and marketing to go out to people or to help track whatever they're trying to do, i.e. a buy or a sell um, or a marketing to get to a buy or sell. Uh, a follow-up program after the sale. You can start standardizing, standardizing your business through technology. That can help you leverage up too. So it's the repetitive stuff. Uh, when you're doing something twice, uh, and you know it's going to come a third and a fourth and a fifth time. Anytime you do something twice, you should create a little process for it. Write it down. Create a checklist. All a system means is a checklist, so that you can repeat this correctly the next time. Um, most of the top solo agents we just talked to, all the top agents, um, I've just been focusing on a lot of solo agents lately. We just did that solo agent summit. Uh, that's where they feel like they, they excel, by the way, is they'll see something that's going to be repeated more than once. They'll grab it and they'll try to break it out into its pieces uh, and detail what needs to happen the next time. So they standardize it. Even as a solo agent, even if they don't plan on hiring 20 people to run a huge, massive team, they need to standardize these processes because it's going to happen over and over and over again. So those are the three areas you can gain leverage, uh, marketing, people, and technology. 
And usually if you're, you don't have uh, uh, any, if you're solo running by yourself, you're actually going to probably start the other end. You're going to start with technology. Um, and then you might get the person leverage with say a, a transaction coordinator to help open up some of your time to find more business. And then you probably will go into marketing. Uh, in the meantime, you're probably generating business by word of mouth. Maybe a little bit of prospecting because that's the cheapest, you know, costs nothing for your time. And then you will go into marketing. Uh, marketing is a, is a tough one. I just tell everybody, uh, again, because you got to know who you're going out to and what the message is to that market to make sure you have a good message to market match, good offer called action. Marketing can be tough to dial in. That's why it's best to try to model someone else who's already has success with it. But even then, recognize you're probably going to have to make some tweaks and modifications for your area, your target, your market. Uh, and that's why I'm going to bring this all the way back around. The number one best place for most people to get a great business going is their PCSOI, past clients and sphere of influence. That's where all, all the top agents get 50% or more of their business from their past clients and sphere of influence, their repeat and referral. All of them that I've ever talked to, and I've talked to over 200 of the top teams and probably over 50 of the top solos. Um, it's all uh, sphere, it's all past client and sphere based. Uh, and then from there, they'll add on, especially the teams, because they got to do a lot more volume to feed a lot more people. That's when they get into marketing to try to expand. But the highest profitable thing, most profitable thing you can do is PCSOI. I mean, by far, it's so much more profitable uh, rather than spending 20, 30, 40 percent of your money trying to generate a lead or buy a lead from someone else uh, just to generate your own leads out of your PCSOI. So I always recommend starting there, create a solid foundation, get some good income going. And then if you want to expand that and you can't you don't feel like your PCSOI is growing quick enough then you can go into some other marketing. Like I did a lot of direct mail uh, in my career, uh, crazy numbers of direct mail, millions and millions of pieces uh, in the end, if I go back and accumulate. It didn't start that way. It was all real small in the beginning. But all marketing is very difficult to get right. So if you ever do that, go that track, make sure you start real small and test and you should get results right away. If you aren't getting results, it's a bad marketing piece. You got to modify and change it. Don't keep sending the same bad marketing piece and expect a different result. That's not smart. <laughs> anyway, I'm going on tangents. I'm uh, tell me what would you all like to talk about so I don't go off on my little tangents. All right. Do we have any other topics you all like us to chat about before we break for the day? Well, I hope this was helpful. Uh, oh, and Michael, did you have something you want to say? Yeah, I was just, uh, just going to tell you that, uh, that that I was good. I appreciate um, uh, the 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 information that you gave, and it. Uh, I learned some things and it reinforced some things in my, in my, in my mind. So I definitely appreciate, appreciate uh, you. I love to hear that. Thank you, Michael. And you're welcome back anytime we do these calls every Tuesday. And oh, okay. You're welcome to pop back in. If you have any questions you think of as you're going through the week, just jot them down and bring them in and, and we'll, we'll go back and forth and chat about them. Sound good. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. All right. Cool. Uh, Julian, did you have a question? Oh. Comment? Yeah, I had a question about um, I have the KB Core inside my EXP. Yeah. So I was wondering um, for calling, uh, getting like FISBO leads or um, expireds, do you recommend any of the other Red X or, you know, Expresso agent? Do you have any? Because I know that I hear that Red X might have um, a lot of bad information more and express those a little better and Vulcan seven, but I don't know if I want to spend the Vulcan seven at this point. Sure. Um, so I don't know if red X is okay or not. 
you know, they're all going to have their pros and cons and they're all going to have some junk in them, right? Just know that off the bat. Nobody's going to have a perfect system. So you're going to end up with some uh, extra. But whenever you bump into that, uh, where you, you're finding some bad leads or whatever, just remember that the alternative <laughs> is not very good. You know, in the old days, we had to drive around to find FISBOs, right? uh, or look in the newspaper and clip them out and paste them in a little book. So, uh, and then we'd have to do reverse directories to find the phone numbers and the addresses and everything else. So the fact that a company like Red X um, or Vulcan 7, uh, those, by the way, are some of the ones the top agents use. Uh, they're putting these things together. Um, I know I'm missing another name, but anyway, they're putting these databases together is really a nice and advantageous. The, the key is this. In that area, you are now talking about prospecting, and the key is action. The key is action. So you need to be uh, whatever information you have, whichever source, you need to be on the phone, reaching out and getting in the conversations with these FISBOs and expireds. Uh, and so you need to have a good script and you need to just have, be comfortable running right into it. Know that there's going to be a lot of rejection or failure and that's okay because it's a numbers game. Remember, you're looking like one out of 10 that'll succeed, but that's not 10 conversations by the way that's 10 leads that you're constantly talking to so the really good top people in this field um i was just thinking of a name uh, uh I, i'm such a visual i think of everybody's face before their name just a minute let me see if i can find that out for you um always forget this fella's name and it's not very good he's over in jersey and I'm going to look in my, my database, see if I can tell you who to go listen to real quick on this to get some highlights. I think it's New Jersey. New Jersey, New Jersey. It's, uh, what's his name? I'm sorry. This is uh, quite boring watching me stumble. New Jersey. Where's my New Jersey people are? Yeah, it is New Jersey. Jeff, Jeff Quinton. Jeff Quinton, it's Q-U-I-N-T-I-N. -I -I and if you go listen to our Success Calls podcast, uh, again, that's at mastermindagent.com. Uh, listen to Jeff's call. He is really good at working with expireds. And if you happen to be part of Real G, uh, R E A L G dot TV, real estate agent lead generation television. We just call it real G dot TV. Uh, he did a section in there where he went through his prospecting of expires. Now, Jeff, he lists and sells about 60 expires a year, six O, so five a month. And uh, I believe at the time we interviewed him, which was a few years back. That was, uh, I think he was making about 10 on each one. So we're talking about 600K a year, 50K a month of income by working expired. So it was just from the expires he was doing. And again, the real G really shows it, but I'll just try to explain it. He's got, he's really focused on, he follows the Mike Ferry system. That's where he originally started, by the way. Mike Ferry has great scripts on all this. You can get those scripts for free if you go over to mikeferry.com and look for his free scripts. Uh, that would be a great place to start because everybody else is, by the way, just kind of expanded off of Mike. <laughs> okay. And I don't know where Mike got it. He probably got it from someone else, somewhere else in the beginning, but he's got great, great scripts uh, for this in particular. Uh, and the key to the expired script is uh, you call up and you immediately get into, hey, I'm just calling to find out if uh, you're still thinking about selling your home. Yes, no. Hey, are you thinking about interviewing agents? Because if you are, I'd love to interview for the job of selling your home. And that's that's the big question. And you're just trying to set up an appointment to get in front of them uh, on that expired. Uh, they are fantastic because, you know, they want to sell their home and they were willing to pay a real estate agent. And then you got FISBOs. Uh, and by the way, expireds are going to start picking up now if they haven't already. And then you got for sell my owners. And of course, they're a little harder. Uh, you usually have to go in and chat more with them about, hey, are you willing to pay a co-op if somebody brings you a buyer? 
And they usually say yes. And then that kind of opens the door and you expand from there. Uh, but if you see Jeff firing away on expires, he's basically sitting there uh, at a standing desk like I'm doing right now. And so he's got his energy up and he's just going down through his list. Uh, and, and it is a challenge for him, by the way, to always find good numbers. And by the way, if you find ones that where you got the address, but you don't have a number, it's really hard. Those are the ones you want to dig really hard on because there's no competition if you can find how to contact them. He goes through 12 ways in real G. He goes through 12 ways. He actually goes out and reaches out and gets that information, uh, which is kind of interesting as well. Don't know if I'm answering your question, but I, I'm trying to help there. What do you think? Is that, is that yeah, what Yeah, I have one more question. How many times are you touching or should you touch your SOI on a phone call maybe per month or or because I – I wanted to set them up on my uh, dialer so I can start calling. That's fantastic. That's a great question. Um, I'll go back to something Mike Ferry said and a lot of the top agents do, and that is four times a year, quarterly. Okay, four, time, well, four times a year, once every three months, every 90 days, you want to make a phone call and be in front of them. Now, not all the top agents do that. Some of the top agents, they don't call at all, uh, by the way. I mean, again, everybody runs a different system. Um, but the ones that are really good at the phone calls, they're typically doing quarterly out to their sphere. And if not, they're at least doing uh, twice a year. Depends on how big their list is. But they're not doing more yeah. than that. I want to make that clear. They're not like calling them every week. Okay. They're not like right on their nose all the time unless they become a lead. So they're creating a lead qualify, a qualification system for how often you follow up with these leads based on the urgency that they've mentioned. So you have to get into a conversation to find out. They say, I'm moving in the 30 days. They're probably calling every day or every other day. If they say, hey, I'm going to be moving in six months, eh, they're probably now calling every couple of weeks or a month, right, or a year out. It just depends on what comes out of that qualification conversation. What about the, um, so if I'm sending them a monthly newsletter, then just do on top of that four times a year? Is the newsletter by mail or by uh, email? It's by mail. Good. I like that. By the way, the, the, you should be contacting your PCSOI three to four times a month. All right. And that sounds crazy. But the way you do it is by different mediums and different offers. You're talking about different things. Okay. So, uh, for instance, one could be the phone call, one could be an email, one could be the direct mail, you know, snail mail, one can be through social media posts, um, one could be something you post in, we talked about at the very beginning, you have a, a group of your PCSOI on Facebook, and you're posting something in there. So you're kind of coming at them from different mediums. So it doesn't, it's not in their face, like you're not knocking on their door <laughs> four times a month, that would drive them crazy. So you're coming at it from different angles because you want to stay top of mind. And this is the time of year to make a, a to uh, err on the side of contacting too much because we're going into the spring and most markets are ramping up. And so you want to get there before everybody else. So if you're going to make a mistake on doing too much, do it right now. Sounds good. I appreciate it. You bet, Julian. Uh, I'll give you one other piece on that because it's a great question. And that is, that is why the top agents love events. They love uh, contests and they love giveaways, and they put those into their annual marketing plan. We started this call, if you go back and listen to the recording, with an example of some of the things you could be doing right now, uh, like leading up into Valentine's Day and so forth. Um, but they like to do events, and here's an example of why. You do one event, you can do four contacts, right? You, If you're going to do an event, you could send out a postcard, you could send out an email, you could make a phone call, you could send out a, a text, inviting them to the event. Four. So if you have an event, like let's say you're lining up on Valentine's Day event, you, you back up three, four weeks, and you contact them once a week leading up to it through these different mediums, and you now reached have a ton of reach out to them. Um, to get in front of them and remind them that you're in real estate, right? Most people will not participate in the event. 
That's the air people think is, oh, uh, if I only got three people to show up in the event, it was a failure. Uh, uh no. If you made your four reach outs to everybody on your list leading up to that event, it is a success. You are going to find business, right? Does that make sense? All right, cool. Uh, so be Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, so uh, Julian, put that into your marketing plan. This, this, by the way, is should be the focus of our whole call today. Uh, so you you want it? You want to? Um, you got your newsletter going out there once a month. Love it. You're going to make your phone calls four times a year. Fantastic. That's probably one of the best things you can do. Uh, on top of that, you might want to add in some kind of email. Uh, and social media, if you if those are mediums that you typically use. Remember, design the business around you and what you like to do. Uh, what I recommend at this point, just with your base of the newsletter and your phone calls, is instead add a couple of events, maybe four events a year, right? A quarterly event. Because once you add the event, as I just mentioned, you can do up to four invitations and then the event itself. And then you do a post event reach out where you say, hey, here's what happened at the event. That's six contacts per event. You do four of those. That's 24 a year. Is that making sense? Yes. Yeah. So right there, just by ho hosting an event. And again, it could be a huge giant gala where you have dancing and music and food and that's the old days. Now they're all scaled way back to you could take someone to putt putt, or you can meet your group at Starbucks, right? Or you can do a King Kate test tasting down in Louisiana. These are all events that work really well if you're going to meet face to face. But then you can go into just virtual events where you're doing these giveaways and these uh, contests where they post things on social media. They're involved, they're talking to you, they're communicating. Um, but the, there's very low, almost no no cost to put on those events. Maybe a hundred, two hundred bucks each, and that's mainly for the awards. All right, the rewards. Um, anyway, hope that helps. Yes, that helps. And uh, Facebook ads. Have you heard of any um, success there? Facebook ads are Facebook. tough. I've actually been playing around with that recently myself, just as a fun little side project. Uh, Facebook, you're you're at the you're at the mercy, as far as ads, you're at the mercy of their algorithms and who they're putting it out to, what they will or won't approve and who they will and won't target. Facebook just got sued by HUD uh, last year and lost a lawsuit that they paid out and or settled in uh, October. And so they made even more restrictions. It's tough, uh, in my opinion, to go out to the general populace on Facebook. Now, if you go out to your sphere, that's different, right? That's different, especially if you've created a, uh, you've brought everybody in and invited them into your own group page, a specific group page just for your PCSY. Uh, that idea comes from Jim Burns. And uh, Jen is the top agent down in, interestingly enough, in Louisiana. And uh, she closed 106 transactions in one year as a solo agent. So I listen to whatever Jen has to say. And a big portion of her business comes from repeat and referral. And, and the big way that that happens is through her group on Facebook. <laughs> and then in Facebook, she just posts things about events that she's doing and giveaways that she has. It's all very low budget and a lot of fun. Okay. Sounds good. I appreciate it, Mike. You bet. Julian, nice to, to meet you. Uh, thanks for participating. Well, I hope this helped everybody. We're going to wrap up now. If you want to see, I try to record this. If it comes out, and you want to see what we did in the beginning or anything we went along with, the recording will be posted on YouTube. Uh, if you go to Mastermind Agent Network, Mastermind Agent Network, that's our YouTube channel. It'll also be posted on our Facebook group, uh, and that is Referral Mastermind Call. Uh, you can get there by going to referralmastermindcall.com and sign up, and boom, it'll drop you right in. Um, what else? That Those are the two places that we post the recording. We do the calls every Tuesday, so be sure to come back. If you uh, think of any questions during the week, this is a great place to kind of hash them out uh, and jump in early on your questions so we can get a lot of time and, and effort to it. But again, I appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, thank you for uh, chatting with me. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, uh, Stephanie had some typing, and there was another gal. I already forgot her name. I apologize. Uh, but thank you for participating today. Hope you have a great day. Be productive this week.
Bye now.